I'd like to welcome you all to the final evening of our 2021 American Solidarity Party National Convention. We've had an awesome three-day event with over a dozen incredible speakers from all around the world. And so we're really excited to have this wrap up tonight. Tonight, we're gonna to be wrapping up in prayer with a closing benediction. We're gonna have a report from the president of the Assembly of Delegates. I'm gonna give a message, uh, tell you a little bit about um, some of the things that I'm working on as executive director and how you can be involved in that. And then we're gonna wrap up with an address from the newly reelected chair of the National Committee, Patrick Harris. Our benediction will be provided by Deacon Stephen D. Graydonis. Deacon Graydonis is a permanent deacon for the Archdiocese of Newark and is the film critic for the National Catholic Register. Deacon Graydonis, please take it away. I work hard to keep my roles as uh, deacon and film critic separate. Um, in five years of preaching, I have yet to make a movie reference in a homily, and I promise not to mention any movies in my closing prayer. Um, Thank you very much for um, inviting me to, to offer this prayer. I want to invite everyone who is listening to raise your minds and your hearts to the giver of every good and perfect gift to the source of goodness, truth, and beauty, and the one without whom uh, nothing that has been talked about this weekend uh, will ultimately come to anything. Father in heaven, you have called all human beings as your beloved children to be reconciled to you, but also to live in peace and harmony with one another, to do away with hostility, division, and alienation, not only between individuals, but between peoples, communities, classes, and nations. And so far as we are able, you call us to seek to build a world of justice, peace, freedom, and harmony. A world in which the cry of the poor, the marginalized, and the disenfranchised is heard. All of these things we pray much more succinctly, countless times a day in the words, thy kingdom come. And as we turn to you now, we express our profound awareness of just how far we are from the reality that we pray for. You have not given us a blueprint or roadmaps for the world we're trying to build, but you have given us signposts. Those who seek for your word often read in the New Testament scriptures the familiar words, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Yet so often in this world, those words are drowned out by a louder voice declaring, blessed are the rich, the powerful, the important, for the world will dance to their tune. In the New Testament, we read, woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. But a louder voice declares, woe to you poor, for the world doesn't owe you a thing. In the political arena in this country, we hear some voices telling us that life is sacred in the womb and the long-term care facility, but not necessarily in the ghetto or the prison, while other voices merely turn that inconsistency on its head. Heavenly Father, we need new voices to be heard. We need to hear your voice in new ways in our world. We need you to open our eyes to recognize your presence in all human beings, especially in the poor and the disenfranchised. We need you to open our hearts and our ears to listen to one another and to hear you speak in new ways to all of us. Give us the grace and the courage to work to reshape our world to better reflect the reality of human dignity. Give us the grace to work to defend our precious freedoms while also working to address economic and racial injustice. Bless us as we try to open new doors and create new possibilities. Give success to the work of our hands. Give success to
to the work of our hands. Thy kingdom come. I offer this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Deacon Gray Donis, thank you so much for that beautiful, incredible prayer. Um, we really appreciate you coming and we appreciate you leading us in prayer uh, to God in that way. Thank you. Thank you. I was honored to be a part of what you're trying to do here this weekend. Wonderful. Um, with that, I certainly feel inspired. Um, and so with that, with that inspiration, with that directing of our heart toward our creator, um, I'm going to turn it over to Valerie Niemeyer. Valerie has been serving the convention, um, not just this weekend, but actually for a number of weeks since the delegates elected her. Um, she's not a delegate herself, but the delegate said, we want her to be our president, to lead the convention. Um, and she's done an incredible job, has given so many hours. Um, she deserves all of our appreciation. Um, but now I turn it over to Valerie, who's gonna tell us a little bit about what happened at the delegate sessions. So Valerie, it's all yours. Thank you, Tony. Um, it was a privilege, um, a humbling privilege. Um, all weekend it was humbling and all weekend it was a privilege to serve along with the delegates during the convention this year. Um, I, when I started, when I got on the groups.io platform that we were collaborating on, I, I picked a quote from Albert Thompson to kind of put on the introductory page there. Um, it's a quote that has stuck with me for quite some time since he uh, spoke it, I believe, uh, in, a, in an interview last year at some point uh, during the presidential um, election season. But uh, here's the quote. It says, the American Solidarity Party is about liberating Americans to live in their communities as equal bearers of the imago dei, the image of God. This is not utopia. Living in a healthy community is hard work. Resentment is easy. Um, and I just, I think that is, it just speaks so beautifully. And, uh, you know, all of us in the American Solidarity Party, we're, we're committed to that hard work uh, within our families, within our communities uh, of creating a, a culture and a civilization of love uh, where the dignity of humanity is upheld. Um, and so, uh, but, but it is not an easy task. And so the delegates, um, you know, we've worked really hard in preparation and throughout this weekend um, and, and in the tension of this, this beautiful gift of unity and diversity, and this phrase is kind of what I was pondering um, as I was thinking about the highlights of this weekend. Um, again, the hard work of uh, being in relationship and, and working for common goals um, in this reality of unity and diversity. And so as a, as a delegate convention, there was a strong, of course, there was a beautiful diversity of delegates from throughout the country. Um, they all shared this common commitment to our common ground as established. So there was a commitment to maintain that commitment to the um, statement of principles and the platform uh, this year and um, just really stand on that common ground together. But at the same time, there was a, a commitment to hear the diversity of perspectives regarding what is the best, best path forward for the party um, to grow and to be able to achieve its goals. Uh, different people have different ideas about what that hierarchy of priorities should be or what, what strategies will be most effective. And so that can bring, again, this kind of hard work of um, collaboration and communication and building consensus. So there was a lot of that uh, tension this weekend, but I do believe it was fruitful. So, um, and there was a, a commit, you know, in the um, resolutions that were considered uh, and put forward and passed, uh, there's a great commitment to reaching out to a more diverse uh, representation of communities. I mean, just that we want to get uh, everybody, we want to get more people on board uh, with this beautiful vision of the party. Um, and especially in, in you know, a broad diversity of communities. And we know that we can tap, tap and offer our gifts to, to different communities more than we are now. So there's a commitment to that, including a commitment to a Spanish language website um, that have been moved and approved. Um, there is also, uh, I should just go ahead and say, you know, as we, the first order of business primarily was to elect the national committee members that there were six open seats this year, uh, four two year seats and two one year seats and those we had such a beautiful um, group of talented diverse folks, we elected Lucy Moy, um, Alan Mickle, Carlo Rosetto, Sarah Burke. Kevin Maurer and Dane Garrett to those positions. And we're, uh, congratulations to them all. And we're looking forward to seeing them bring their gifts to the table on the national committee. Um, 
So I mentioned university and, and um, unity and diversity rather. The other phrase that comes to mind in terms of highlighting uh, the achievements of the, dele the delegate convention is traction and participation, traction through participation. So there was a quite a few, there were subcommittees uh, that were created to really be able to harness um, the passion and the gifts of our members throughout the country um, who all have diverse interests and experience and expertise. So, uh, for example, uh, there were resolutions passed to be exploring uh, how to become more aware of and align with federal election commission uh, requirements so that we can become recognized as a party as we continue to grow and make sure that we're aligning with those requirements and hopefully eventually get recognition in that regard. Also just discussions about how to best support candidates. We know we need to um, have people winning elections. And so there was a lot of discussion about how can we can best support people, um, both, you know, especially um, in smaller elections, uh, but also on, on a grand scale, as we know, we get a lot of we get the word out through those bigger elections. So there was a lot of discussion related to that. Um, you know, in the end, I think solidarity is the word that that really captures uh, the experience of what we all um, experience this weekend. I think a lot of people who have been working together through digital media, um, text <laughs> typing, um, it was really a blessing for delegates to come together and see the faces and hear the voices of the people that they're working with. At one point in the convention, um, Randy Miguel uh, spoke, it was in the midst of one of those kind of fruitful <laughs> friction moments. Um, and he really just reminded us, and it really um, it honestly brought me to tears, but that we are so privileged we're, we're God has given us this great work within the party. And um, the delegates, I think we all felt very privileged to be working together in this great work, um, promoting a, a reverence for human life and human dignity from conception to natural death and all of that, the implications of that reverence for life. So uh, yeah, there was just this beautiful solidarity that we experienced uh, and there was a lot of hard work and there was just a lot of gratitude. And so I just wanna extend my gratitude for the opportunity to be a part of that. Um, and to all the delegate, <clears throat> all the delegates who hung in there and worked so hard, so many hours this weekend. Also, gratitude to the spouses and families who sacrificed our presence, as we did um, contribute many hours <clears throat> to the efforts uh, of this dele uh, of this delegate convention. So, I think that pretty well covers it. And of course, thanks to God <laughs> for the opportunity, especially. Thank you so much, Valerie. Um, kind of just hearing some of those quotes and those reflections uh, you share there remind me of a there's an, an essay by Nathan Schneider about about cooperatives and cooperative economics um, and he quotes Pope Francis in that um, in it in kind of in the end of a paragraph then cyclical Pope Francis says truly much can be done um, and I think kind of what you're talking about that that blessing of getting to engage in this good work kind of that it just made me resonate like you know truly much can be done Truly, and great work. It's great work that is being done and that will continue to be done. So praise God. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for what you did and, and what all the delegates did. Um, I think we'll, we'll probably continue to hear about the, the fruit of your guys' weekend um, for many months to come. Yes, yes. Thank Wonderful. you, Tony. Yes. Um, so with that, I'm going to talk for a little bit. Um, those of you who don't know me, my name is Tony Gadotti. I'm the interim executive director for the party. Um, I can tell you that working for the party, it's a dream job. Um, you know, like Valerie said, um, it's such a blessing to be able to, to do this work. And so um, I'm honored to, to work for all of you who are members of the party. Um, I wanna give a few thanks. Uh, we've had an incredible convention with so many great sessions, great speakers. And so I just wanna, wanna give a few, few thank yous to people who helped make that happen. First of all is the producers um, who produced Friday night and Saturday's convention, Amar Patel and Jackson McNeese. The convention literally couldn't have happened without them. Um, and they gave so many hours to make it happen. So a big, a big thank you to Amar Patel and Jackson McNeese. I also wanna thank all of our guest speakers. Um, we, you know, we wouldn't have had all the exciting sessions if they didn't come um, to share with us and really help advance our movement. So thank you to our guest speakers. Thank you to our moderators um, who, you know, you may think, oh, okay, they just sit down and talk to that person. But these moderators put a lot of hours of preparation in reading the books that were written by our guests, 
you know, working through questions with our convention committee, trying to build the sessions as best we could. Um, and so it's not an easy job. So a huge thanks to all the moderators, some of whom um, accepted kind of last minute asks um, and were totally flexible to help us out. And then last, I wanna thank all the attendees you folks who are on this call, the hundreds who were on the other sessions in the other days. Um, thank you for attending because your investment in the party, um, whether it's engaging in community with other members, whether it's learning about these topics and ideas that are key to who we are as a party, it's all essential to moving our movement forward and achieving our goals of making a public policy and electoral difference in this country. And we're in really exciting times for our party. In 2020, we doubled the size of the party. And since the November election in the last six months, I guess seven months now, the party's grown another 20%. This is the time of year when most parties have their fundraising going down, their membership going down. There's not a lot of energy for elections. In our party, we're increasing our membership. Folks are being generous and, and continue to donate, allowing us to really plan huge things for the 2022 and 2024 election cycles. Um, and we've had some really successful special election candidates. Um, you know, talking about elections, our party's getting more votes than we've ever had before. The Brian Carroll presidential campaign got five, you know, I don't know the exact numbers in front of me, but more, they got more than 500% increase over our 2016 presidential campaign. That was awesome. But then we had two special election candidates in April and there they did even better. So Ben Schmitz in his Wisconsin state Senate district, he tripled the percent of votes that Brian Carroll got um, in Wisconsin. And Wisconsin was, you know, we got fourth place in Wisconsin as, as a party of our size. That was an incredible success. Ben Schmitz went and tripled that. In New Hampshire, Stephen Hollenberg received 10 times as many votes in his one state house district. He got 10 times as many votes is our presidential candidate got in the entire state. All of the energy, all the momentum is on our side. And, and this is, I'm gonna promise, I will write a blog post with all the data um, for you all on the party website. But it's, I'm really excited to share with you that if you look at Pew and Gallup research polls, every single one of kind of our cornerstone issues, the sanctity of life, necessity of social justice, responsibility for the environment and promotion of a more peaceful world, every single one of those issues, our policies, our positions are held and supported by the majority of Americans. Most, we are the party that most Americans are waiting for and we have the momentum. And so now is, is the time for us to continue to grow, for us to strike while the iron is hot and really prepare and say 2022, we can make an impact. 2024, we're gonna make more than a splash. We're gonna, we're gonna be known and we're gonna have an impact in the work of our party, be it our candidates, our people in official leadership, our volunteers, and the folks who are members, uh, who have friends, have neighbors, who they can share about the party, that we're all gonna make a difference. And so now is the time. And I'm gonna tell you a few ways that you can get involved. And I'm actually gonna drop a link um, in the chat that has all of these things all set for you. Um, so you can just click links. I'm gonna walk through some of the ways that you can get involved. Number one, if you are not a member, become a member. Uh, becoming a member helps us in so many ways. We, we're working on getting recognition from the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, to be, have full party status. That allows us to fundraise more money from folks. It gives us a bunch of other perks. But in order to do that, we need recognition with more members in more states. So becoming a member helps us do that. It also Make sure that you get access to a bunch of special events and opportunities we have, including a bunch of exciting new ones that are on the horizon that we're not announcing yet, but are coming. Um, but you, to do that, you need to become a member. Um, to do that, you can just go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash support the ASP, or go to our homepage. There's a button in the top right for you to, to join the party to support us. Two, um, get involved locally. If you're already a member, Get involved in your state chapter, your local chapter, some places have county chapters. Um, get involved locally. And if you are not already connected to your local chapter, you can send me an email. My email is executive director at solidarity 
hyphenparty.org. Send me an email, tell me where you live. I'll get you connected to people that are there so we can build up our party. Now's a great time to build the party. You know, more and more people are vaccinated, more and more public spaces are opening up. This is a great time to gather people together in person to make things happen, to spread our movement and get ready to support candidates. Um, so send me an email if you want to get involved locally, executive director at solidarity-party.org. Related to that, same email address. If you have skills, whether it is graphic design, which quick pause, someone I didn't thank, Sam, whose last name I don't know how to say, but I think it's Quinnen. Um, Sam Q did all the graphic design for the convention. I thought it looked incredible. Um, it helped us spread our message further. So Sam, thank you. Also, thank you to Mark Bradshaw who helped get our information on the website. Um, so if you have graphic design abilities, web abilities, if you volunteered with campaigns or other political parties and are now a party member, if you have writing skills, if you have fundraising skills, if you have photography skills and want to help us do stock images that are unique to our brand, no matter what your skills are, no matter what your, your passion, your hobbies are, I bet we have a way that we can channel them into what we're doing as a party. Send me an email, executive director at solidarity-party.org. Donate financially. No one likes being asked to give money. It's true, right? But to make an impact, we need, we need money. And if you look at the cost effectiveness of the money given to our party, we do more with less and your money is all well spent. Um, if you look at the, the, you know, the dollars spent in advertising and campaigning per vote the last presidential election cycle, we spent, we had an efficiency like 25 times that of the major party candidates. Um, that money that you give is be going directly toward helping local candidates get on the ballot. It's going directly towards spreading our message. And if you're here, if you're a member of a party, you want our message, our unique brand of politics that doesn't say left or right, that doesn't say the other side is evil, but instead says humans have dignity and that should be the basis of our politics, then please give so we can help spread that message. And one other note about giving, we appreciate any gift, even one, like we get $1 donations, we celebrate those, that's important. But I wanna stress monthly donors. When we set our budget, we look at recurring donors. Um, and most importantly, look at the folks who are giving every month. Uh, and, we have, and we have a few hundred of them. Those folks who give every month, that's how we set our budget. We look and we say, what are the, you know, what are the donations? What's the money that we know we're gonna have? And that's how we set our strategy. And so if you want us to dream big, and we've heard across the weekend, a lot of speakers who had big dreams for this party and big dreams for policies that we support. If you want us to grow exponentially, and, and we kind of already are growing exponentially. So if you want us to grow exponentially to the, you know, to the power of two, please give monthly. Even if it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, those monthly donations add up and they make a difference. Um, so please consider giving. If you want to donate financially, um, it's that bit.ly slash support the ASP link. I also want to plug our California governor's campaign. Uh, he gave our keynote last night. Um, incredible speech, incredible member of the party. He is raising money right now so he can be on the ballot in California in the California governor's recall election. Um, they're, they're raising some great money, but they, they are not yet at their goal to be able to pay the filing fees, um, which are due in about three weeks. And so if you want to help support the, the Dr. Hannock campaign in California, that's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash ASP candidates. That's a unique link that allows you to give to support our local candidates. Right now, the, the majority of those funds are going to that Dr. Hannock campaign. Now, we always need more candidates. Candidates are essential, right? We're a political party. If you think I might want to be a, a candidate, please email me, executive director at solidarity-party.org. The very last thing that I want to plug for you guys is we right now have a special edition, limited edition, new ASP t-shirt. It's super cool. It's kind of a, a retro 80s Miami color scheme. It's really cool. Um, it's not an official logo, but something we're rolling out temporarily to celebrate the convention, to celebrate all the awesome speakers and all the awesome energy behind our party. These things, these shirts, these designs, you can get it on a mug, you can get it on a baby onesie. I think you can get it on a face mask. Uh, T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, 
If you want this sweatshirt, you got to, or this design, you got to move fast. That's bit.ly slash ASP swag. I can tell you, I ordered mine. I got the, the blue t-shirt design with, with that logo on it. I'm really excited to wear it. It's a cool logo. Check it out. Um, all those links are, are there in the chat for those of you watching live. Um, if you're on YouTube, I'll put those links in the description. Um, but with that, uh, I want to thank you for listening to me. I hope that you feel the energy because there's so much awesome stuff that's going on. And to tell us more about that awesome stuff, I'm going to turn over to Patrick Harris, who was just reelected as our party chair. Patrick, are you ready to go? Yep, Tony, can you hear me loud and clear? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, fantastic. Well, I will keep this fairly brief. Um, and I want to echo all the expressions of uh, gratitude um, for all the people who made this convention possible, that, but especially calling attention to uh, Tony, who was absolutely indispensable, as well as uh, Valerie, who really made a, a heroic effort uh, to, to keep the convention running um, on the internal side. So I, I want to really offer kudos to both of you. And um, you know, about a year ago, uh, we had planned to have our first uh, in-person national convention for the first time. We, we had actually rented out space uh, in the uh, Washington, D.C. area in Maryland, and uh, we were planning to convene in person. And uh, as you can imagine, that didn't happen. Um, and uh, we had to call things off because of COVID. It was an unusual year. It's been a very difficult year uh, in some ways. Uh, made it more difficult for the party. And of course, it's been very difficult uh, for all of us um, in, our, in our country. And uh, now that some things are uh, starting to open up a bit and, and God willing, things are getting back to normal, um, I think it's a time for the, the party to, uh, to reopen as well. We, we want to get uh, not just, you know, our, our online activity, which has always been vigorous, but also to begin to renew our in-person connections with one another in the party and in our communities to get out there and, uh, you know, make the message known in all the ways that, uh, that Tony has been talking about. Because the truth is, uh, we really are offering something that is unique on the American political landscape and something that is needed, uh, something that a lot of people are looking for. And from all the growth that we've seen uh, in the past year, we know that when we do get the message out, uh, people respond uh, and will continue to grow. And, uh, so we can only um, we can only expect that as we do get that message out, we'll see continued growth, and that will lead us to a point where we can really make a difference in this country. Uh, and with that in mind, um, I will bid everybody a good night. I will thank you for watching. Uh, if there's anything that you missed uh, during the proceedings, we will have everything up on uh, YouTube and social media for you to check out soon. But uh, thank you for joining us at the uh, 2021 American Solidarity Party National Convention, and uh, God bless and good night.